Hi, welcome to my channel in another interesting experiment with the Arduino Uno. Up until this point, we've controlled light uh, in the form of an LED with the Arduino, and we've ventured into controlling the mechanical world in the form of a servo motor. Uh, today, we're going to create sound with the Arduino Uno. If you recall, in those two experiments, we used pulse width modulation to control the LEDs and to position the servo motor. And in both those experiments, we controlled the duty cycle of the pulse width modulation. And in this experiment, we're going to actually vary the frequency of the pulse width modulation signal. The duty cycle will stay the same, but we will vary the frequency. Now, although this is a pretty straightforward circuit, the voltage divider formed by the photoresistor and the 10K resistor presents a limitation or a problem that we're going to overcome with programming. And this solution is going to help us utilize the full range that the analog to digital converter can give us when it changes the analog signal to a digital signal. So let's take a look at the uh, circuit first. So here's the circuit. We have the Arduino, and then we have a photoresistor and a 10K resistor, which forms a voltage divider. And at this junction here, we're going to apply this analog voltage that is going to be proportional to the light intensity on this photoresistor. We're going to apply it to A0, and then the onboard analog to digital converter is going to change that to a digital form that we can then use to apply to this piezo or piezo and produce sound. So let's talk about the limits of this voltage divider and how we're going to overcome that with software that will help us utilize the full range of the analog to digital converter on the Arduino. So we're going to take an analog voltage that varies with light intensity and convert it to digital form using the onboard analog to digital converter that has a range of 0 to 1023 in its digital representation. The problem is we're not going to have complete darkness in a room and we need to figure out what the brightest light is in the room and scale that or convert that so that we use the full range of 0 to 1023. So once we figure out what the darkest light is, we want that to be zero, and the brightest light, we want to be 1023 in its digital representation. We're going to solve that problem by programming in a calibration sequence. For five seconds, the microcontroller will look at the lowest level of light in the room and the highest level of light in a room, and then assign the 0 and the 1023 range to those values respectively. So the lowest level of light will be determined and then given the value of 0 and then the highest level of light will be determined and given the value of 1023. With this solution if you had a different range of light values you, you can then recalibrate the circuit so that you still get the same range of frequencies with the new light values that you have in a different environment. If you remember the voltage range on the input to the analog to digital converter is 0 to 5 volts and those get converted to the digital representation of 0 to 1023. So here's an example of the resistance of the photoresistor to the existing light in the room. It's about 4k ohms, 4000 ohms and if I take a flashlight and I apply a light to it, you can see that it decreases. So here we're down to about 800, 900 ohms. Let's change the range here. You can see that. So we can't get it down to completely zero ohms. There'll, there'll always be some resistance value there. And if we turn off all the lights, change the range, let's put my hand over this. 
So let's see if we can get so we can get this over 20k. There it is. Complete complete dark. Over 100k. So that's quite a range. Another concept that this experiment introduces is frequency. In the past, we had the same frequency for the pulse width modulated signal, but we changed the duty cycle. In this experiment, we changed the amount of cycles that appear in the same period of time. So you can see here, there's more cycles in this waveform per period of time than in this one and it's changed again here and frequency is 1 over T so the more cycles you have in a particular time period the higher the frequency is so let's take a look at the program real quick so first we declare an integer variable called sensor value this is going to be the analog voltage that is applied to the input of the onboard analog to digital converter. Then we're going to declare an integer variable called sensor low and initialize that to 1023. Then we're going to declare an integer variable called sensor high and assign that the value 0. Now, the maximum digital value out of the analog to digital converter is 1023, and the minimum digital value is 0. So these may seem at first to be reversed, but this is part of the algorithm, and hopefully I can explain why we do this in order to solve uh, the problem with calibrating to the existing light. Next we will declare a constant integer variable LED pin and assign it to pin 13. Pin 13 has an LED on it and the LED we will use to indicate the calibration time. When that LED turns off the calibration period is over. Now we call the void setup function and we use pin mode has two arguments we're taking the LED variable that we declared as a constant and assigning it as an output so we're calling pin 13 an output next we use digital write and again two arguments LED pin and we turn it on a high the next part of the program performs a 5 second calibration. For 5 seconds the microcontroller looks at the voltage at A0 which is proportional to the uh, light range in a room and assigns new high and low values to sensor high and sensor low. After 5 seconds digital right turns the LED on pin 13 low. So this was initially confusing to me. I had to give it some thought, but this is the algorithm that's used in order to determine the minimum and maximum light levels in a room during the calibration process. So during calibration, you put your hand, wave it over the sensor, and you know that the sensor low will not be this maximum value it'll be something lower so during that five seconds it keeps on reassigning the lower value to the sensor low which will be something above zero but definitely below 23 10 23 so we go in the opposite direction the same thing for uh, sensor high we know that the maximum light level is not going to be zero volts and the digital representation isn't going to be zero, it's going to be something above that. So it starts off as zero and then depending on the intensity of light it reassigns the sensor high value. So after the calibration is over with, after the five seconds, we have a new sensor high value and a new sensor low value. 
that it determined by measuring the voltage in that five second period. That way we could cal recalibrate this if we're given if we give this photo resistor a different range of light. So you can see here we do an analog read and we read the sensor value. Then it takes that current value and compares it to sensor high which we initialized at zero and is definitely going to be above that. So then if sensor value is greater than sensor high, sensor high is equal to the new sensor value. And it does that for both high and low during that five second period. Once the calibration is completed, we do an analog read at A0 and read the current sensor value. Next we use a new function called map which remaps a number from one range of values to another. So in this case we're taking the range of values from low level light to the brightest light in a room and we're going to change that to a range of frequency values from 50 to 4000 and then assign that to the integer variable pitch. Then we will call the tone function which has three arguments what pin to play the frequency on so the piezo is connected to pin 8 what pitch to play so pitch was determined using this map function and then how long to play that note here we're using 20 then we're going to have a delay to give time for that process to work and then it repeats it goes back and it measures the light level and then does the calculation and gives us another note or frequency so let's hook up the circuit and see it work I just have to upload the sketch and the light should come on an LED that's on pin 13 there it is so you get five seconds just have the change the vary the light over the photoresistor. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's not too annoying. Oh, there it is. For what it's worth, creating sounds with the Arduino Uno varying the light on a photoresistor and then converting that to a frequency a varying frequency that we hear on this uh, piezo element so thanks for watching i hope you found this video interesting please subscribe and or comment and uh, stay tuned for more videos on the arduino uno and what you can do with it. I have to turn that off.